Today on Operation 8-Bit, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to see if we can teach this old dog a new trick. The hard drive in it's dead, so what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with an IDE solid state drive. Will it work? We don't know. Let's find out. A few months ago, we received this HP Pavilion DV1000 laptop as part of a donation from our friends Jim and Betty Crowley of Valley Cottage, New York. The unit is in nice shape, but when we tried to boot it up, we were getting a no boot disk error. So the logical assumption is that the hard drive had gone bad. No biggie, that's pretty much a grade school fix. As is typical for a restoration video, Sparky and I set up the cameras and started getting some shots of the unit, and I started walking through how easy this particular machine was to work on. The surprise came when I got the panel off of, for the hard drive, just to find out that there was no hard drive. Well, that explains the boot error. When we first got the computer and saw the boot disk error, we knew that it was going to be an issue that we had to fix. We also knew that getting a replacement wouldn't be an issue or as there's a lot of drives that are pretty easy to find on eBay or Amazon or wherever. But here's where the problem comes in. Sure, we can get a replacement, but what we'll wind up with will either be a used drive or at best something that was 20 years old, new in box. In either case, we're going to have something that's old and prone to failure. Also, Swapping out a hard drive would make for a pretty boring video. After a bit of discussion, what we decided to do instead is we wanted to see if we could use a micro SD card as a hard drive like we would for this Raspberry Pi. Aside from being more stable than a spinning disk, we also expected that it would probably be faster and it would open up a few other opportunities that we'll discuss later in the video. All right, so let's get back to it and see if we can teach this old dog a new trick. Going this direction, there's just a few pieces of hardware that we'll need to, for this mod. First and foremost is this IDE micro SD card adapter. Unlike older compact flash cards, SD cards aren't compatible with the IDE standard. And this little board has a chip that handles that interface for us. We picked this one up on eBay for just under seven bucks and it came with free shipping. On the other side of the card, we have a slot where we insert the micro SD card and our pins for connecting and plugging the board into the computer. Obviously the type of memory card we use for something like this is gonna have a direct impact on performance. For our project, I'm gonna use this 32 gigabyte PNY with an adapter. I've got a bunch of these lying around and I use them in my Raspberry Pi projects. They're inexpensive, relatively fast, and I've had pretty good luck with them. Finally, we're gonna need a drive caddy for the HP. Not so much for this mounting bracket, but more for this proprietary connector that attaches to the pins here and then attaches into the computer itself. Putting this all together is pretty straightforward and simple. I simply, I'm just going to insert this here and then the card goes in like so. I have a positive click and now I'm just going to line this up and insert and there we are ready to go and have that installed into the computer back to our HP we're not just going to take this and insert it as such and this slides in it's a little tight there we go come on there we go we got it and again the cover is more aesthetics but it will look good going on there so I just put this in place and we're ready to tighten everything back up if I can get this part in all 
All right, we're ready to go. Let's plug it in and see if the hard drive gets detected. With everything put back together, we repositioned the camera so that we could show the setup steps. And that's where we ran into problems. As you can see, even though the computer will boot into the setup screen, after a few minutes the BIOS locks up and the screen gets all garbled and torn. It's hard to see in the video, but you can see it better in this still pic I took with my phone. We thought it might have something to do with the SD to IDE adapter, but we ran into the same problems with a regular hard drive as well. Okay, well unfortunately that didn't work. With the BIOS being corrupted, we really can't continue the experiment to see if the machine will boot and get an OS loaded onto it. Um, we do want to say thank you again to Jim and Betty. That was a very nice donation, and hopefully we'll be able to revisit that machine in the future, see if we can get it working again. In the meantime, we still want to teach an old dog a new trick. And we found an old dog. Our friend James was able to dig up an old gateway laptop from around the same time frame. And as you can see, this laptop may have seen a better day or two. But it is in good condition. It is working and it does boot and we have been able to verify that part of it. So what we're going to do is go back. I'm not going to bore you with the video of popping in the hard drive again. Um, I'm just going to repeat those steps and then we're going to get an OS installed on this and then we're going to continue on and we're going to do our speed tests. Given that we had a working computer, we decided it would be a good idea to run a benchmark test and record the results before swapping out to the new IDE SSD drive. After the test completed, we wrote everything down and then set to work on swapping the drives and installing Windows XP as our operating system. The replacement machine booted up from the USB drive without a problem, and after a few minutes we were greeted by the Welcome to Setup screen and the end user license agreement that no one ever bothers to read. We mindlessly accepted the terms and were brought to the screen that we had been waiting to see, the one where our new SSD drive was listed and ready to accept the OS. We finished out the selections and then sat back and waited for XP to finish installing. The final copy process took a little over 10 minutes. Now I'm not sure if that's any faster than normal, but I will say it felt a lot longer while we were standing there watching the progress bar. When that finally finished, the computer rebooted for the first time on the SSD and we came to the installation setup screen. Windows estimated that this would take about 39 minutes and we watched for a bit to see if it would complete faster. At some point, not too far in, we decided to turn off the camera and that we would just report the time it actually took. Unfortunately, we got distracted and forgot to time it. With the setup complete and the USB drive removed, it was now time to do our first full boot into XP. What you're seeing here is the unedited start to finish time, and you can definitely tell the difference. XP was up and ready to go in under 20 seconds, and I've never seen XP boot that fast. Next, I opened the start menu and navigated over to the computer settings so I could check out the hard drive info. And there's our drive and we can see that there are about 29 gigs of space free ready to be used. With the basic checks out of the way, the next step was to install and rerun the benchmark software to see what, if any, difference there really was. So how did it all turn out? Well, first of all, it actually worked. And when we compare the before and after benchmark numbers, I think it turned out okay. And since that's a video that I'm going to add in post, I actually have the numbers right here in front of me. Our overall score, which factors in a whole slew of metrics, shows that there's a 16% improvement in performance. The sequential read score went up about 28%. And our random read-write score jumped over 266%. The only metric that went down is the sequential write. And I'm curious as to why that is. If you have any ideas, make sure to leave a comment below, as I'd really be interested to hear your thoughts on that. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. The computer boots faster. The scores show that, for the most part, I've gotten a bit of a performance boost. And I've come up with an alternative to buying a used drive off of Fleabay. There's also another advantage that we haven't really talked about yet. And it lies in these relatively cheap micro SD cards. 
For this project, we loaded XP. I could have just as easily loaded Linux, or maybe DOS, or maybe even Windows Vista. Okay, not Vista. This thing can barely run XP, and Vista was really total crap. The idea is that I could have a few of these ready to go that I could just pop into a computer and in a matter of minutes be up and running on a new OS. This can be really useful if you've got a machine that you want to use as a workhorse for different projects, but you don't want to worry about having a stack of regular hard drives taking up a bunch of space. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to share and subscribe because we've got a lot of videos in the works. As a reminder, all of the profits and from any ad revenue that we make from this YouTube channel go to support charitable organizations, like the Tour de Force 9-11 Memorial Bike Ride, who in turn use those funds to support the families of law enforcement officers that lose their lives in the line of duty. For a complete list of the charities we support and how you can help, please visit our website. I've left a link to that in the description below. Again, we hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time on Operation 8-Bit. Um, but we're gonna do an IDE SSD. I don't think that exists. Okay. Well, hold on. I need a plug to deal with these. Good counting. <laughs> you always kept a bucket like that? Yeah, I do. All right. Especially when it's in my way. It's not your way. It's, it's not in your in way. way. It's right there. Then move it. Two. You, you didn't kick the bucket that time. Oh, okay. Well, there you go.